Our first speaker for today is Dr. Rohan Mehra. Uh, Dr. Rohan Mehra is a medical director at CKI Institute Saranpur, a consultant uh, at Vision Eye Center Mumbai and a director of My Health Card Private Limited. Uh, he is going to be talking on whether there is a need of abirometry in cataract surgery today. Thank you. Over to you, Rohan. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nikhil, and thank you for having me part of this IC. It's always a pleasure. So I am uh, going to be talking upon uh, the fact that patients come to us saying that there are imperfections in the vision. So is there a need for aberrometry in cataract and refractive surgery? So often we get this uh, situation wherein, uh, of course, if there's a cataractus lens, we know what the diagnosis is. There is a cataract. We need to remove the cataract and that will take care of the aberrations. But there are occasions when you do get a clear lens also in somebody who's maybe 40, 45 years of age. And you cannot explain why that person is complaining of imperfect vision. The second subset is uh, when you have frequent changes of glasses. Now this can happen at any age to any person starting from 18 onwards where you have a, a case in where uh, the patient says I'm having frequent change of glasses and you can do all your examinations, you can do all uh, your tests, your in investigations and you're not able to find out why this is happening. So let's let's take a case example first. So 40 year old uh, patient and he's complaining of difficulty in driving. And that's the only complaint that uh, the patient has. You examine everything, you see that the patient has 6'6 vision and uh, this is how the slit lamp uh, photographs look for the patient uh, wherein you are seeing an absolutely clear lens. There is no cataract at all. So you've got to don your investigative hat and uh, go ahead and do an abrometry. Now, uh, this is the abrometry of the eye trace. The eye trace is the latest tool on the block. The advantage that eye trace gives you is that it separately tells you the internal aberrations and it separately tells you what the aberrations are on the cornea. So you know where the aberrations are coming from. Then of course it adds it up and gives you a total uh, aberration also. So there is no machine other than the eye trace right now in the market that can actually do that. This is another example. So see, in this, in the previous case, in the previous case, the internal aberrations were higher so you know that more aberrations are going to come from the lens so if you do anything to the cornea as well it will not take care of what is happening internally over here so you can do what you want to the cornea you can do a surface ablation you can put a contact lens on top to remove those imperfections but till the time you know that you don't know that what is happening inside you won't be able to give clear vision to the patient Let's take this case an example Everything is coming from the lens compared to what is coming from the cornea. Again, if I touch this cornea, if I say do a surface correction on this and I tell the patient that your vision is going to be all right, it's not because actually the problem is coming from inside. So let's take a look at what's new. So initially when the eye trace was launched, it did not have this. This is called the dysfunctional lens index, the DLI. Now, what happens in the DLI is it needs to be as close to 10 as possible. The further away, that means the lesser it is from 10, the worse the dysfunctional lens index is. And um, there have been studies that have said that uh, press biopia is actually the first stage of cataract. So how would you justify operating a patient who is complaining of having a frequent change of glasses, having imperfect vision, without actually ha being able to document it in any way. This is especially helpful for insurance patients. Insurance patients who come to you and they say that, you know, you, I, I'm not enjoying my vision. Then you can always document it by using this DLI feature and operating on that patient. You are justified on operating on that patient because you found out that this DLI is further away from 10 as possible. So, from the cornea in this particular case i showed you initially that everything was coming from inside so in this particular case also this is how the patient is reading the e chart if you only take the cornea into uh, consideration the moment you start taking the lens into consideration this is how the patient is reading so the combined effect is this is how the patient is reading 
So although the patient might strain and be able to read 66, but actually that patient is not lying. This is how, you know, some sort of an image, sometimes by some angle of incidence of the light is getting made. So here's another example. It's 4.62, not as bad as the previous one. But still, you can see that the total eye, this is, this is how the patient would be actually reading it. The other good feature about the eye trace is it gives you a potential visual complaint mix focus also. So it will tell you where the patient is experiencing according to the machine, according to how the algorithm is in the machine, whether the patient is having starburst, or patient is having halos, the machine also sort of tells you. The other things are modular transfer function and point spread function. This also uh, on multiple times. So at one month, three months, six months, when you take it and compare it, you'll get to know that these are the imperfections either on the cornea or on the lens that are causing the problem for the patient. Okay, so before the eye trace was launched, of course, we had the Zernike uh, wherein it was on the Pentacam. Again, you it would tell you differentially the type of astigmatism that is present in the patient's eye. Whatever the contour of the cornea, what is up, what is low, you could make out from the Zernike's analysis. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that I got, uh, the 3D target geometry model of the cornea again. There are certain machines that give you this, but uh, this is something that was there older. Now, you don't have to really go around reading this machine, reads this for you and it sort of gives you a report. Now coming to my last slide, which is the most important slide, and why we need abrometry in today's uh, day and age is this. You don't know what profession your patient is coming from. So 95% of the cases that you'll do, whether it's a refractive surgery or it is a cataract surgery, you'll be able to satisfy your patient, your patient will be happy. That's because in his day-to-day -day life, uh, most of the time, he's all right with those imperfections of vision. But sometimes when you get, say for example, somebody who's a pilot, or you get somebody uh, who's, who's a cinematographer, who has to work on the camera, uh, or you get somebody who is from the army and he needs to do shooting. So those people cannot, you cannot uh, satisfy them unless and until they have an absolutely perfect vision. So we have to be extremely careful in certain professions, what the occupation of the patient is, to find out what their imperfections in the eyes are, and the new tools on the block definitely help us. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. That was a wonderful talk. Um, so do you feel that it is uh, absolutely essential that in today's turn, uh, for a newcomer, all of us here are young budding ophthalmologists, uh, the need to have an abirometer in our practice, so, especially if you're practicing cataract and refractive surgery? So it totally depends on what gentry of patients you're getting. As I said, if you're getting people who are highly trained, highly skilled, highly qualified as your patients, then those people will pick up. So like for example, there was a patient who was an actor and he said, you know, I need to pick up the warmth of the colors from the screen that I read in. Uh, and uh, when I do an editing, there was an editor, I need to pick up those warmth of the color. So if you get any imperfection into those visions, then it's a problem. If you are treating general, you know, people, people who are not such highly skilled or trained into certain professions, then an aberrometer, like something as uh, expensive as an eye trace may not be necessary, but still at the end of the day, uh, even a simple aberrometer would be helpful.